So now for the ninth question of this paper, we are given two variables x and y, which are satisfying this differential equation. And it is given that the value of y is zero when x equal to zero. The main question is over here that we have to solve this differential equation and then find the value of y when x equals to half. Now, this is a classic question whenever it comes to the differential equation. Now, whenever this kind of question comes, I consider this to be a free seven marks. Because the concept remains just the same of this, the only one thing that you need to keep in mind is that your concepts of integrations are pretty much clear. Because if that is clear, you are going to get a lot of free marks because integration is spreaded across a paper three like anything. You will be also saying it's implementation, uh, I mean implementation in this particular question. So let's go ahead and try to see how we can solve this kind of questions. So the first step is always to separate these variables y is on one side and x is on one side. So you have to separate it in a way that dy stays on the numerator and dx also stays in numerator. So over here we can see that on the left side dx is in the denominator. To shift it to the numerator, I have to multiply my dx on both the sides. Right. So dx goes on right, dy stays on left. It simply means that all the y terms are going to be shifted to the left. All the x terms are going to be shifted to the right. That's the main thing that you have to remember. So the equation that you are going to get for y on the left side, if you take this to the left, it will be 1 divided by e to the power of 3y, which can be written as 1, I mean, e to the power of negative 3y. We also have a dy term that is multiplied by this term. And now this is equal to sine squared 2x and then multiply it with this dx. What is the meaning of solving a differential equation? It simply means that integrate on both the sides on left with respect to this variable, on right with respect to this variable, and then get one thing in format of another thing, one form of like y in terms of x or x in terms of y, something like that. That's the kind of common kind of questions that we get in differential equation. So we simply have to integrate both the sides. Now, because we don't have any kind of limits, Obviously, it means that we'll be getting integration constant that we'll have to solve by using this piece of information. All right. So now what we can do is over here, we can see that the left side is pretty much easy to integrate. But when it comes to the right hand side, it's slightly difficult because we cannot use n plus one rule over here. And there are no other rules directly that we can implement it in one step. So first of all, to do that one step kind of integration, we have to transform this trigonometric uh, equation into an another format. So whenever you are having sine square of something or cos square of something, we always convert it into the format of cos 2x. So if I'm using the cos 2x formula over here, and if I'm bringing it in the format of sine square only, no cos square terms involved, this would be 1 minus 2 sine square x. I know this formula. You must know this as well. Only then you will be able to implement it. But now you can see that we want sine square 2x. Over here, we are having sine square x. Nothing wrong with that. You can just multiply this angle by two. But if you do that, you will have to multiply the whole whole equation. Wherever there is an angle, you have to multiply those angles by two as well. So this angle will also be multiplied by two. Then this becomes cos 4x is equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared 2x. And now you are having sine squared 2x as the required thing. And now you can make that the subject out of this equation. So if you'll make the subject, you will get the answer as sine square 2x is equals to, this goes left, this goes right, so 1 minus cos 4x. And then I'm also dividing both sides by 2 because I have to get rid of this 2. So half times 1 minus cos 4x is the replacement or an alternate way of writing sine square 2x. Now, with the help of only one step integration, we know how to use uh, trigonometric integration to take the uh, integral of cos Term, right and that's pretty much one step so now after converting this into that format we can now integrate both the sides in one step so therefore i'll just write one statement that this is the same as writing e to the power of minus 3y dy is equals to half is common i'll take it out of the integration symbol and now we are left with 1 minus cos 4x dx now on the left side if we integrate with respect to y we know that e power of negative 3y will stay as it is. It will not change. But now because the power is minus 3y, 
we can differentiate the top part. So if you differentiate the top part, the answer is negative three. So because we are right now doing integration, we always tend to divide the derivatives of the inside of the function, where a is the main function, inside function is minus three y. So the inside function is minus three y, so derivative of that with respect to y becomes negative three. So now if I want, I could have in, like to you know, introduce a constant over here, integration constant, but I'll tell you what I'm, why I'm not introducing it right now. On the right side, half stays as it is. And for the integration, one with respect to x, the answer will be x cos x. First of all, let me just write minus as it is. The diff integration of cos is sine. So this will be sine of 4x. But now the same thing. Sine is the main equation. Inner equation is 4x. We can differentiate that. The answer will be 4. And now because we are I mean, integrating, we have to divide it by that 4. If you were doing in, I mean, differentiation, in that case, I would have multiplied this with 4. Anyway, so yeah, that's the uh, integration. And now I am going to introduce one constant over here. Now this constant represent a value of that integration constant that we get after integrating this. Also the integration constant that we get after integrating this. Let's say we get C1 from here and C2 from here. Together I can write K is equal to C2 minus C1, right? I can do that same. So I just have to find one integration constant instead of two. So that's the kind of technique that we always use. It's not that something that's my intelligence. This is something that you will always do in this kind of equation. Either you bring integration constant to the left or you bring it to the right. It does not matter. Okay. But then after that, you are having only one unknown out of this whole equation because X and Y are given to you. You can simply go ahead and find out the value of K. So therefore, after substituting, I'll just mention this, that substitute sub in x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So the final thing that you are having right now, on the left side, e to the power of 0 is 1. So you're left with minus 1 by 3 on the left side. It's equal to 0, sine of 0 is 0. So this whole term is 0. So k is equal to negative 1 by 3 is what we are getting from this. So we have solved the differential equation, but still we have not found out the value of y when x is equals to half. So let's do that now. So therefore, I'll just change the color. Yeah. So therefore, what we are having now, we are having minus 1 by 3 e to the power of negative 3y is equals to half times now we are having x is equals to half so i'll just substitute that minus sine of uh, 2 because 4 times half is 2 divided by 4 plus k so that k is nothing but minus 1 by 3. now you simply have to make y the subject of formula right so i can write the same thing as e power of negative 3y is equals to I'm multiplying on both the sides with negative three. So this is negative three by two. Uh, negative uh, three by two, half minus, or else what I can do is I can convert that whole thing in, into decibels and write it over here. So minus three multiplied by the whole term because on the right hand side, it's just uh, something that we can solve it with the help of Kelsey. So let's go ahead and do that. And make sure that your Kelsey is in uh, basically your radians mode. So 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 minus sine of 2. That is divided by 4. And after that, uh, we are having minus 1 by 3 outside of the bracket. So that comes out to be minus 0. Point, minus 0 0.196995. Five, something, something, something. Now we are having that term together when we will multiply it will become a positive value and therefore we can introduce ln on both the sides so that we can we are getting rid of this ln term over here because we know that ln is equal to 1. So ln e to the power of negative 3y is equals to ln of if I multiply this term if I multiply this with uh, negative 3 basically negative 3 into this will come out to be 0 0.5909 eight six five something something and now we know that we can bring this minus three by in front of ln e and ln e value is equal to one so this becomes minus three y 
is equal to ln of 0 0.5909865 something something and therefore what is your y equal to your y is equals to your y is equals to minus 1 by 3 ln of the same 0 0.590865 dot 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 and if you solve this in your Kelsey, you will get the value of y as let's check. So minus one by three times ln of answer comes out to be 0 0.175 correct to three significant figures. And that is your final answer of question nine.